It is time now for Nine's Afternoon News. Good afternoon. Let's go to pictures just into our newsroom. Crews have just retrieved a helicopter which made an emergency landing in Sydney's Royal National Park. The chopper, carrying three generations from the one family, lost power on Saturday while flying to Kangaroo Valley. All four on, on board were unhurt. Well, police in Melbourne have swooped on the city's northwestern outskirts in the search for missing mother Karen Ristetsky. The Avondale Heights woman was last seen at home on June 29. Today, investigators from the Missing Persons Squad, Air Wing, Dog Squad and Search and Rescue scoured land around Tulin Vale and Gisborne in a hunt for clues. And we'll speak to our reporter who is at Search Headquarters a little later in the bulletin. The hunt is on for the driver who hit and killed a woman in Guildford in Sydney's west as her devastated family comes to terms with a tragic loss. Nine's Gabrielle Boyle joins us now for more. Gabby, do police have any leads at this stage? Thanks, Gabby. Terrible story. There are grave fears for a 15-year-old Sydney boy who's gone missing from his home near Camden in the city's southwest. Lachlan Flannery was last seen just before 7 this morning in the Oaks and may have headed to Sydney's CBD. He was last seen wearing a black hooded jumper and dark shorts and was carrying a black backpack. It's one thing to have a refreshing dip in a lake. But this polar plunge in Alaska takes things to an extreme level. More than 1,000 people braved the freezing conditions for a good cause, raising $300,000 for the Alaskan Special Olympics. Many dressed up in costumes, getting into the festive spirit, while others thought board shorts and a bomb were the go. Still to come on Nine's Afternoon News, the wedding day disaster as a tree collapses, killing a guest. A breakthrough for those with advanced cases of breast cancer. Will it lead to higher survival rates? And spectacular pictures from Mexico's volcano of fire. With just days from Christmas, shoppers have headed online to order their presents, making it the busiest week of the month for parcel deliveries. But as Nine's Cassandra Wallace explains, there's still time to order those last minute gifts. Let's get a quick check of the weather now with Justine Conway. And it was certainly better weather for the cricket today, Justine. It was, Mark. South East Queensland had a very stormy day yesterday. It wasn't just Brisbane, it was the Gold Coast too, but that has all settled down today. Although these troughs are triggering extensive storms through the top end. Darwin had 50 millimetres on Friday night, 29 yesterday, and there's 45 forecast today. It's been a gorgeous day in the southeast, but this cold front is going to be a grinch and put an end to that overnight. Melbourne has reached 29 today and the change is expected to arrive just before midnight, so it'll still be a nice evening. It was even warmer in Adelaide with a top of 36 degrees and there's a chance of a thunderstorm sparking up later this afternoon or early this evening. It's been a pleasant day in Hobart, reaching 24. It was a cold morning though, just 7 degrees, and it's worth noting that yesterday morning there was snow on Mount Wellington, so there has been a very cold pool of air over Tasmania. Sydney looks spectacular but it has been coolish, only reaching 22, so a few degrees less than what we'd expect for this time of year. I'll have tomorrow's forecast along with a look at Christmas Day a bit later in the bulletin, Mark. See you soon, Justine. Thank you. And still to come on Nine News, the extraordinary new Lego exhibition taking visitors around the globe. Plus, coming up in sport, a nail-biting finish to Australia's first test against Pakistan. And Joel Parkinson on a roll at the Pipeline Masters. Right now, though, here's a look at what's happening in tonight's news at 6. Aussie lovebirds inside the proposal that has to be seen to be believed. Just how did he pull it off? Plus Frankie J Holden and Wilbur White. Tomorrow on Today Extra. This next story involves around 5,000 hours of work and two million Lego bricks. Nine's Mike Dalton spoke to Australia's official, official Lego builder about his new exhibition in Sydney. And that's where we'll leave our Gold Coast viewers. Your next bulletin is at 5.30 right after Millionaire Hot Seat. Julie Snook is here now, though, with all the day's sport. 
Good afternoon to you, Mark. We'll start with cricket first. And Australia has secured a nail-biting victory over Pakistan to go up 1-0 in their Test Series. A dramatic final stand from the tourists falling just short at the Gava. For all the latest, I'm joined by Nine's Corey Norris. Good afternoon to you, Corey. I tell you what, Australia doing just enough to get over the line mm. today. So, Julie, an amazing finish to this first test up here at the Gabba, which sets up an enthralling Boxing Day contest at the MCG next Monday. It certainly does, Corey Norris. Thank you very much. Melbourne City star Tim Cahill says he's getting used to being booed by rival A-League clubs during his return season to Australian domestic football. The Socceroos' top goal scorer admitting he knows it's nothing personal. And Joel Parkinson has made the most of small conditions at the Pipeline Masters to advance into the fourth round. Parko survived a nail-biter against Hawaiian young gun Finn McGill before cruising through his third round heat. Fellow Aussie Ryan Callanan and Josh Kerr also advanced. So there you have it. A busy afternoon in sport. Thank goodness we got that result in the cricket, Mark. Just got there. Just got there. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Still to come on Nine's Afternoon News, Cold Case, the $100,000 reward for information about a 2006 Sydney murder. Why paralysed NRL star Alex McKinnon is planning to go to court. Plus, Zsa Zsa Gabor, the Hollywood star and socialite, dead at 99. And we're live on the red carpet for the premiere of Nicole Kidman's new movie, Lion. That's it. Police investigating the disappearance of Melbourne mother Karen Ristevsky have begun searching properties on the northwestern outskirts of Melbourne. Nine's Alexis Daesh is at uh, Tulin Vale. Alexis, what's the latest on this search? OK, Alexis, thank you. Former Newcastle Knights player Alex McKinnon is set to sue the NRL over the tackle which ended his career and left him paralysed. Let's go live now to Nine's Lizzie Pearl who's at NRL headquarters. Lizzie McKinnon is also seeking compensation from the player involved. Now this legal action is unprecedented. We've seen before players taking on other players in court. However, it's the first time the sport's governing body will be dragged into a courtroom. Of course, legal experts will be keeping a very close eye on these proceedings because the ramifications are not only for the NRL, but for other sporting codes as well, Mark. OK, Lizzie, thank you. Well, these are some pictures just into our newsroom. A house fire has broken out at Epping in Sydney's northwest. Early reports indicate the blaze broke out in the garage before quickly spreading inside the two-storey home. It's unclear if anyone was inside at the time. Still to come on Nine's Afternoon News, finance and the latest weather with Justine Conway. Justine, the southeast is about to cool down. It is, Mark. Adelaide has had two lovely warm days, but Melbourne only managed one. Tonight, this cold front will cool things down and it's going to send a few showers across Victoria and Tasmania as well. I'll have all the details for you next. Good afternoon and there are some interesting weather conditions in our far north at the moment. A monsoonal trough is sitting very close to our north coast so there's a slight chance of a cyclone forming over the next couple of days. It's likely to affect the Kimberley region so we'll see how that develops overnight. Melbourne is set to reach 21 tomorrow. A cool change will arrive late tonight and there'll be up to 8 millimetres in showers but they should clear out before lunchtime. The change will arrive earlier in Adelaide so tomorrow will be fine with a mild top of 24. It'll warm up in Sydney heading for a top of 31 but there's the slight chance of afternoon showers and even a thunderstorm. A top of 30 for Brisbane with the light chance of a shower or thunderstorm and a hot one for Perth sunny and 35. A warm day ahead for Canberra it's set to reach 30. A top of 21 degrees from Ho for Hobart with some late showers. Now this is the picture for Christmas Day and at this stage it's looking very wet in WA although Perth is expected to be hot and dry. There'll be showers along the eastern seaboard. Sydney could get a sprinkle with a forecast top of 29. Late showers in Brisbane and 28. Dry in Melbourne and 30. 24 in Perth. 37 in Adelaide. 25 in Hobart. Showers for Canberra and 31. Storms for Darwin. Of course things could change over the coming week but it's an interesting picture. Mark. It's a mixed bag. Thanks, Justine. Well, a pair of fishermen on the top end have had a catch they'll never forget. The men were fishing for barramundi when they hooked a three-metre crocodile. 
The struggle lasted around 15 minutes. Unfortunately, they lost their lure in the process. A small price to pay. And speaking of prices, a quick check of finance. The All Lords has finished up 23 points. One Aussie dollar, 72.93 US cents, 85 yen and 69 euro cents. And that's Nine's afternoon news. Our next bulletin is at six o'clock. I'm Mark Burrows. Have a great evening. Hope to see you tomorrow.